All right, everybody, let's take a look at the question that we have in front of us. Uh, it tells us the equation y equals 2x plus 8, which is in slope-intercept form currently. We know it's in slope-intercept form because it starts y equals. And it's asking us for three of the most important characteristics, slope, y-intercept, and x-intercept of this equation right here. So one of the things we're going to talk about is how do we tell those things algebraically. We could graphically do this. We could think of a graph of y equals 2x plus 8, and we could kind of sketch one out, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and say we have a y-intercept of uh, 8 and a slope of 2 up 2 over 1, and we could kind of get the idea of what that graph would look like. Um, and we could start to figure out what the y-intercept is, that's that point there, or what the x-intercept is right there. And we could probably know most of the stuff if we did an accurate graph just by doing that. What we're going to look at today is how can we just find it uh, if we didn't have a graph? How does the equation tell me that information so I don't need to graph it? So we already talked about two things. Because this is written in y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form tells us two things just by looking at the equation. It tells us the slope is 2. So here where it says slope, you could say the slope is equal to 2. And it also tells us our b, which stands for the y-intercept. Now when we talk about y-intercepts, we want to make sure we don't just write 8 for the y-intercept, although if someone said the y-intercept's 8, we would probably all know what they're talking about. We like to write y-intercepts as points. It's the point that's 0 over and 8 up. And so what we're going to talk about today, which is going to help us figure out our x-intercept, is this idea that the intercepts happen at either where x is 0, so up on the y-axis, or where y is 0, somewhere on the x-axis. And so we could look at it graphically and also show that the y-intercept is 8 if we didn't, sorry, not graphically, but uh, algebraically. And that is by taking the equation y equals 2x plus 8, and just realizing that the x and the y are coordinate pairs that are all on this line that would make this equation equal. And so if I know that my y-intercept, that's the one that touches the y-axis, every point on the y-axis has an x value of 0, I can plug in 0 for my x and then figure out what the y-coordinate should be. So in this problem, if I want to find the y-intercept, I know in y-intercepts the x value is 0. I could say, all right, my y value, which I don't know, is equal to 2 times my x value, so that's 0, plus 8. And if I solved it, not really solved it, but just evaluated it, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 8 is 8. So the y-coordinate to this point is 8 when x is zero. That's why we get a y-intercept of zero, eight. Now again, you probably wouldn't need to do this algebraic step because if it's in slope-intercept form, I know that number that's by itself without the x is the y-intercept, so I could just write zero, eight here. But this helps us start to understand how we find the x-intercept as well. Because in the x-intercept, when it touches the x-axis, it's not that our x value is 0 anymore. We have an x value. We're over. It looks like it's going to be negative something over, but we're 0 up. So now we know our y value is 0. And so I could do the same thing. So this was to find the y-intercept. I can do the same thing to find the x-intercept. But in the x-intercept in y equals 2x plus 8, it's the y value that's 0. So this is the important part. Important enough that I'm going to say it again. In a y-intercept, when it crosses the y-axis, the x value is 0. It's kind of the opposite of what the, the words are. So in the y-intercept, the x is 0, because we actually have a point on the y where it intercepts it. x-intercept, it's going to be, I can think of my answer, it's going to be the y value that's 0. So when I go to plug in what I know into this equation, last time I plugged 0 into x, because I was looking for a y-intercept. If I want to find a, a x-intercept, then I'm going to plug in 0 for y. So instead of the y value, I'm going to plug in 0 and say 0 equals 2x plus 8. And now I'm going to figure out what the x is. Now on this side, y was already by itself, so I just did all the math. 
Here, x is not by itself, so I have to solve for x. So I've got to do a little bit of solving, but that's fine. Start farthest away from the x to get x by itself, which is the plus 8. So we subtract 8 from both sides. 0 minus 8 is negative 8, and that's equal to 2 times x. At this point, to get rid of the times 2, I divide by 2, and I get negative 8 divided by 2 is x equals negative 4. So that means when my y value is 0, my x coordinate is negative 4. So that means my x intercept is negative 4, comma, 0, which is pretty close to where I was at when I just hand sketched this and was kind of guessing where it's at. So just quickly to review, to find a y intercept, we make x equal to 0. When we want to find an x-intercept, we let, I shouldn't say make, we let y equal 0 and solve it. So in the equation, we can just plug in 0 for different coordinates to figure out what the other ordered pair coordinate is going to be. Um, so this is an example of the first one, so hopefully it made sense. Um, and if not, you can just plug in those answers.